Good morning, and welcome to worship at Crossroads United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Mike Farmer here in our Fresh Market and Free store with our brand new checkout counter. So glad you chose to worship with us this morning as you're preparing your worship space. I invite you to gather uh, a pad, notepad or scratch paper so you can take notes throughout the service, as well as a bowl or cup of water, as today we're celebrating the baptism of our Lord. So I invite you now to calm your mind, calm your hearts, and prepare yourselves as we worship our Lord and Savior. Friends, our scripture reading this morning comes for us from the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning in verse 4. And it reads, John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus, from the Nazareth of Galilee, was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice from the heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Friends, the Word of God, for the people of God, thanks be to God. Now, 
I'm going to shoot you straight. <laughs> this was uh, my sermon. Sermon writing days for me on good weeks is uh, Tuesdays. And this is what you got. It's a good sermon, I think. Uh, but Wednesday happened in our country, and I'm a planner. You know, I, I like to plan things out. I, I, I like to follow patterns and know that I have things taken care of. But did I mention Wednesday happened? Hmm. I went back through and I read this, uh, and I've really been struggling with this this week, I'm being completely honest. Because uh, I take seriously what I write and what I do and how I research and how I approach the Word of God and what I present to you each week. And, and I went back and I read this and I said, not the sermon for this week. This isn't the one. Um, I think it's good. <laughs> and maybe in year B, three years from now, I'll get to use it again. Uh, and so I'm going to do something that I, I don't do because I am a planner and go off script for a moment. And I brought some props to help me through this. Thanks be to God. I know you're sitting there probably thinking, don't, doesn't he pre-record these things? Yeah, you do. And it's Thursday. Uh, it's a day after that thing that happened on Wednesday and I'm still processing it. Frustrated about a great many things and I'm sure that you're very frustrated too about a great many things that went on this week. And it's tough to grapple with. And But this just so happens to be the Sunday that Christians all over the world recognize and celebrate the Sunday of the baptism of our Lord. And it's a day that if we were here in person, we, we would all be gathered here in our sanctuary. And uh, it's one of my favorite Sundays because we would gather in and I would bring the baptismal font to the front and we would do a, a service of a remembrance of our baptism. Um, and we're going to do that uh, still for I want you to, to do it at home. And so if you're watching this sermon and you haven't already or you didn't know to do it, go ahead and hit pause here real quick. Go get yourself a, a cup of water. I'll explain later. But if we were in here in person, we, we would do a remembrance of our baptism service, which is not to be rebaptized, but to remember that we are baptized and what it means. And, and it's to call other people, if you're not baptized, into that same family. In the same way that the scripture we read this morning said that all of the Judean countryside and all from Jerusalem went to the River Jordan to be baptized. We do that. It's a call. It's an altar call. Uh, but, but it's also a call for us as Christians to reaffirm what it means uh, to be baptized. It's a touch point, if you will. And we always do it or try to do it at the beginning of every year when you're making your resolutions, right? To give you the touch point of your baptism as a signal for how it is we're supposed to live in this life as water-washed, spirit-born children of God. It's a touch point. And that's what I really want to talk about today. Touch points. I spend a lot of care, as I've said, crafting sermons, messages, and devotions every week, if only to give you touch points. Not touch points to me, but touch points to something greater. Because at, at the end of the day, I'm just another beggar telling another beggar where to find some food, right? I'm trying to provide that touch point. Uh, in this case today, it's water. And some Sundays, it's, it's, it's bread and wine. Some Sundays, it, it might be a song. So something to give you a touch point to that something that's bigger than you, that almighty spirit of love in this world and 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 touch points is where I want to go. And I spend a lot of care with these. It's the reason, another one of the traditions I love at this church at the beginning of service, um, I, love, I, I walk this down the aisle, right? Uh, I start at the back and the choir comes in and sometimes we place uh, the cross uh, up here up front and it's a touch point. A symbol of what it is we've come in here to do, to set our minds and our hearts in the right space. Um, and it's important for me uh, as I prepare to lead worship or to lead a sermon, uh, to carry this in, and not because it's big and it's a, the heavy version of the Bible, but it's important for me uh, because it's what I'm stewarding. It's what's been passed on to me and that I hope to present to you. And, and I get to come down here and place the Scripture right at the altar. And I get to turn it to the page 
for the lectionary text for that day, in which case today we're in Mark chapter 1, right? And we read the story of our Lord's baptism. So I get to turn to that page and take those actions, if only to present to the congregation and everybody here that this is where we're starting today. It's a touch point to set our minds and our hearts about the business we are about to partake in. And I love the lectionary because it's not my touch point. Friends, millions of Christians all over the world, Catholics and Episcopalians and Lutherans and, and, and Methodists and, and all non and, and, chase, and churches all over the world are, are reading this text. Most Christians, Orthodox Christians, are reading this text today. Now imagine that. That here we are in different places, in different time zones, in different cultures, and in different languages. This is the text that's being read all across the world. The same one I just read to you. It's a touch point, and I love placing this here. If only to set the tone for what it is in the spirit that we are about to enter. It's a touch point, and I'm offering it to you. It's an invitation for us to enter the Word of God. Listen to it, as we say, to get that pen and paper out and listen for the Word of God in your life because we know that He has a message for you, but it's a touch point. As I watched the events unfold on Wednesday, horrified, as I'm sure all of you were, and some signs raised with the President Trump's name with, with Jesus, and there was a cross raised at some point, and, and, and it was, they're trying to offer some kind of touch point for folks. Some kind of point, some kind of message was going to, was being drawn, but friends, those two things were conflated. Let me explain. And I told you, I didn't have time to write this down. I shared in my devotion earlier this week, uh, prized possession of mine, if you will, uh, which is this flag. My wife bought me this flag, came from the veterans of foreign wars before my, before my first deployment. Uh, big, huge, beautiful flag, and it's really dusty and dirty and tattered and torn uh, for this reason. I told you I have, I have props today. Uh, for this reason, and that is, uh, this is a painting of my fire base on my first deployment. Um, this is a picture of one of my howitzers firing its first round in, in combat. Uh, and the artist, and, and, that, and that's the flag that was here. It was an artist's rendering of a picture one of my soldiers took. And, that's, that's that flag that sat there on Cop Sormont uh, as I was there for, for 10 months. And uh, the flag. While I served in the military, I became concerned about a few things. Not just, I, I became concerned that a lot of the stuff that I was doing, a lot of the stuff that I was thinking, a lot of the things I was feeling as I came back from, from war and theaters that I started to think that not everything I did uh, was good. Let's just put it that way. Good in the sense of this. Good in the sense of how I felt right here. But the truth is, I'd be lying if I told you that this was my primary touch point. A lot of the times it was this. Am I making sense? We had this flag flying there. We always had the flag on our, on our right shoulder with the, blue star, with, the, with the blue part and the stars facing forward as if to say soldiers always go forward in battle. We had each other, right? We had these, we had these other touch points that, that focused our mind upon the mission uh, that we had. Um, ah, this touch point uh, came up a lot when I was scared, right? When I felt like I really... I, we had a little chapel service on our base and one of our trucks or... Uh, somebody else's truck hit an IED, right? Chapel service is full the next Sunday, but uh, uh, then it always waned, right? This touch point, the water of my baptism, uh, not as prominent as, as this one. You kind of wonder, in our scripture text this morning, uh, there are a couple interesting things I want to uh, raise. The first one is this. In our Old Testament scriptures, People, as they travel throughout the Old Testament, uh, you always go up to Jerusalem. Does that make sense? You know how you always say, well, I'm going to go up to Grandma's house, or I'm going to go uh, up this way. You know, even if it's south, right, you always go up to Grandma's house because it's Grandma. You're going up to Grandma's house. 
uh, right? It's the same way. You go up to Jerusalem. It's the holy city where the holy temple was, where, where God's spirit uh, resided in the, in the temple. You always went up to Jerusalem. Um, interesting thing about our scripture text today, uh, when you look at it, uh, people went up to the River Jordan. And it was there that the heavens were ripped open and the voice of God was heard. Interesting. And as we find out later in our New Testament text, the touch points that were being offered, those, the, and sometimes those very traditional ones, those, uh, and, and right, sometimes the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the, and, and, the, and, and the scribes, they get a bad name for being the traditional ones, especially in our Protestant churches, but uh, they were so focused on their touch points, and it was all just about the act or the ritual of doing it when, when it was that God wanted our hearts, right? And we know that, but, you know, Jesus didn't go up to Jerusalem. Jesus went to the wilderness. People went up from Jerusalem to the River Jordan where John was baptizing people, and it's the same trip that Jesus met. And when you take into the scope of everything that Jesus is about to do after his baptism, healing the sick, raising the dead, suffering on the Via Dolorosa before he's hung on the cross and he rises from the dead three days later. All of that, Jesus goes up to the River Jordan to remind himself who he is. The beautiful scriptures that we read this morning, the heavens were torn open. This is my son, my beloved. It was a touch point. In the same way that this touch point was one that we used to set us apart on our mission to do the things that or at least we felt that we had to do. Jesus goes to the waters of baptism to set him apart about the mission that God has sent him on. It's a good touch point to hear those words, my beloved. And when we offer this service about uh, renewals of our baptism, it is a touch point for you to remind you to remind you that on your baptism, God said the same thing to you. You are beloved. I'm just concerned. Concerned that sections of the American church are raising this above this, above this, and above this, we've conflated patriotism with our calling, who we truly are, to live into the beautiful belovedness that is our baptism is what it means to be human. As Genesis chapter 1 reads that God's Spirit hovered over the waters in the vastness of the deep, and it is from the water that God brought life. This is important. Don't get me wrong. It is a part of our civic duty. And we have seen our democracy stand up to some uh, pretty challenging times in our history. I've also seen this right here stand up to more. The waters of our baptism are a touch point. And sometimes you got to wonder, and I know, I love this church. I love the traditions that we have. As I described to you, I love the windows and the touch points that we offer in here. This to focus us on the person that is Jesus Christ and His Spirit in the world and how we are to live. And we see that Jesus needed that same touch point before He went. And I love these traditions, but sometimes I wonder, right, this should be enough. This should be enough for me. And I know it's hard to say in a year where we haven't been in here to worship, but maybe two or three times and outside, and it's been a hard year to say that, you know, we know that we need more to gather more and to be in more. But you know what? Sometimes this is enough to sustain me. 
it was enough to sustain Jesus. And, 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 and I just kind of want to close with this point. And I don't know where your heart's at with what happened Wednesday and that kind of stuff. And all I'm offering to you is, is don't get it twisted. While we have our civic responsibilities and our civic duties, and we love this country very much, I don't care if you voted for President Trump or you voted for, for, for Joe Biden or, or whoever else that you voted for, folks on either side love this country very much. But don't get it twisted. We may raise this symbol higher than the other flags we put on our flagpoles in our yards, but in here, don't raise it higher than this. Find time to hit these touch points in your life. If it's picking up your Bible every day, friends, uh, we are in year B of our lectionary, and I'm challenging you. In 2021, read the book of Mark. It's the oldest gospel that we have. Let that be a constant touch point in your life. And if you're really motivated and you're out there like, yeah, and you're a straight-A student and you read through the Gospel of Mark, it only takes 45 minutes to read through if you just did it. And so if you go through and do that right after this service and you finished it, do it again. Let the words of this gospel in 2021 rule your life. Let it be a touch point for everything you say and everything you do. Because this should be enough. God should be enough. I want to close with this. I used to run a, short, uh, a small warming ministry out of a place called Church for All People on the south side of Columbus. And we used to gather up seminary students who were already up late um, studying and doing their homework and me trying to do my Greek work and uh, all this stuff. Uh, we were already staying up late. So we said, you know what? Uh, why don't we go down? We, we could keep Church for All People open in the evening you know, when it gets real cold and, and just let people come in and get them some soup. And, you know, while we're studying, we can watch the place, make sure you know, folks are taken care of and, and they can come in. So we did. And some students and some people got together. We kind of had a call schedule. It was, it was really great. But w one day I'm down there and uh, my wife Erin had, had joined me that evening. And we're down there. It's like 2 or 3 in the morning, and there's about 30 or 40 or so folks sleeping in the sanctuary. And for those of you who haven't been in a church where homeless people sleep uh, in, the, in the sanctuary, uh, welcome to the kind of church that I think, you know, Jesus would be proud of. But, and so we're sitting there, and folks are just kind of sleeping. And we weren't a homeless shelter, and to stay legal, we called it a Gethsemane prayer service. A little Bible joke in there for you, uh, which we offered pillows and blankets and stuff for folks. But either way, about 30, 40 folks in there, and at one point, one of the gentlemen who had come in uh, a little intoxicated, wasn't feeling very well, and, uh, and, he, and he threw up on the carpet. And I watched my wife kind of quickly go over and, and minister to this man and uh, take care of him and get him cleaned up and uh, got him back to sleep. And we ended up getting him, you know, to the hospital and, and, and taken care of. But uh, I remember watching the spirit of my wife in that moment and, and was really moved. Was really moved looking at this sanctuary with bare walls and you know none of this none of this uh these place like this a holy old sanctuary it's just a storefront with homeless people sleeping in it and uh i just had this moment this thought that said this, this should be enough and i wondered if everything that we do within our lives right to offer touch points and stuff is shouldn't this be enough Shouldn't God's Spirit be enough? And so I remember I, I felt moved in this moment. I've never shared this w with anybody, my wife or anybody, because I'm not very good at poetry, but I, I, but I felt the call to write, and uh, I offered to you. This was written a few years ago, uh, and it's called, What If It Was Gone? It says, What if it was gone? What would you do? What would you think? No windows or colored glass candles or cloth what if it was gone what if it was gone no altar no pews no seats no brick or mortar to keep it all in what if it was gone what if it was just you and me and a song and the spirit would you stay would you pray for me or anyone else if it was just you and me and the Spirit. If it was all I had, I would be glad, praise God. For a song, praise God, 
for you. Praise God for the Spirit. The morning breaks, the shadows flee. Pure love to me, to all. Your mercies move. I know you, and your name is love. And that's enough. Friends, as we move into this part of our service today, as we remember our baptism, get that water out. And maybe you're going to do this later, uh, and that's fine. But I invite you at this time to get whatever cup of water, uh, bowl of water. If it's raining outside, stick your hand outside. I'm going to offer you a chance just to recommit yourself. To recommit yourself to, uh, to saying, you know what, it's enough. What you've given me, God. It's enough to empower me. It's enough for me to overcome even the darkness of this world, even these things like Wednesday. It's enough for me to overcome corrupt governments. It's enough for me to overcome injustice. Because you and me and the Spirit, it's enough. So brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and give a new birth through water and the Spirit. And all this is God's gift offered to us without price. And so, friends, I'm going to ask you a few questions. And the first is this. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please say, I do. Friends, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, please say, I do. Friends, let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old Testaments and the New Testaments. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations. So pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to remind us that our sin is washed away and that you clothe us in righteousness and that you remain with us all throughout our lives, that in dying and being raised with Christ, we may share in your final victory. And it's really simple, friends. I'm just asking you at this time just to go ahead, take that water, and what I would do if you were here in the church, I would just take that water and I would place it right here on your forehead in the sign of the cross and say these words. Remember your baptism and be thankful that having been born again by water and the Spirit you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Friends, you are beloved. And if you have not been baptized and you are wondering what is this beloved community that I can be invited into and that Jesus Christ invites all people into, call the church. We'd love to talk to you about it. 
and help you take that next step in your faith journey. So friends, I hope this was a good touch point for you today. To let the touch point of your baptism and God's Spirit and the Word of God in your life be raised higher than anything else so that we may live as the faithful disciples that Jesus Christ calls us to live. That despite what happens around us, we are water-washed and spirit-born and blood-bought children of God. I love you, friends. Have a great week, and we will be back in church on the first Sunday of uh, February and join us for that ser service in person.
And now may you go forth to live into the spirit of your baptism, even when you are led into the wilderness places. With repentance and trust, give yourselves to God. And with fasting and prayer, strengthen yourself against the ways that temper. And now may God enfold you in tender and lasting love. May Christ be beside you in times of struggle. And may the spirit guide you back to the path wherever you stray that you may keep the covenant. Go in peace now. Live in peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.